Uh, okay, Lars, uh, I would like, first of all, uh, to express uh, my admiration what I saw here. Uh, first of all, uh, this grand, grand event yesterday, gala event yesterday, and of course uh, the building of the European Southern Observatory. And here's my congratulations once again to uh, you, your, your uh, team, especially because you were in the center of all these celebrations, you were preparing this, and uh, you, uh, you have done already lots of work and still doing. It's a very, uh, very intensive schedule of you today, and thank you for finding these minutes to talk to us. Thank you. And uh, um, that you agreed to give us an interview, a very short interview. And my first question uh, to you is um, how it feels like being the outreach director of such a big observatory and such a big scientific organization. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege, I would say. It's a, something where very few people are allowed to do. I'm allowed to work in science, which I, I love, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm allowed to do something which is meaningful, mm -hmm. sharing uh, the universe, which is another passion that I really mm -hmm. uh, have. So combining both the communication and and my passion for the universe is, is just a, an enormous privilege. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, project could you say was the most challenging until now? Uh, I mean, outreach project. Um, in uh, ESO in general or in for the anniversary? Uh, uh, in ESO in general. Um, every year we invent new things, so I tend to think that the, the most recent ones are the most challenging, but it was challenging to make a movie about ESO, I think, uh, mm -hmm. a, a real documentary which shows uh, how interesting the organization is and how interesting the science is without making it too boring or um, too black and white, but to portray the whole width of the organization. I think that was, that was challenging. It was a really great movie. Uh, I witnessed it because I participated somehow in translation. But um, uh, can you please remember how you began with Hubblecast, then Isocast, how it all began? Mm. So the our f sort of TV career in, in, in outreach started when HD became uh, mm -hmm. a topic uh, some, I think, four years ago or so, mm -hmm. five, five years ago maybe. Um, and back then a HD, high definition, was just this buzzword everyone was interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to see if this was a, a way to gain access to a new audience mm -hmm. and found out that <coughs> that Apple had made the iTunes store, which already had quite some popularity, and that by making good content and posting it in the iTunes store, we could very easily gain a big uh, audience. Mm -hmm. And that's how it, it, it went. And then of course we had to design a nice um, type of video podcast and find a good host, find good science and, and good imagery and a great team. And, and then we, we started producing mm -hmm. the Hubblecasts. Yeah, 3D, 3D graphics, 3D animations, it's simply amazing. And here's my uh, greetings to Martin and his uh, team. They are doing a really great job. Uh, and of course, uh, your host, Dr. Liske, is absolutely brilliant talker, presenter. Uh, right a few minutes ago, I had a talk to him in person, uh, making an interview. It was absolutely great how he uh, comes you know, um, with, with uh, several themes and he comes with uh, uh, thoughts uh, about the future of uh, the uh, astronomy and especially in cosmology. It's very interesting to yeah. talk to him. Uh, he's, a, he's a natural talent. We screened many uh, scientists before we found him in the end. And, and uh, we have, as you say, a very good team uh, and working very, very well together. And it's a very efficient team also because we're doing so many things now, not just the ESO casts, uh, Hubble casts, but also the ESO casts. Mm -hmm. And the <coughs> we do news graphics for every press release that come, uh, comes out, typically yeah. also yeah. videos. Um, we have a fantastic story next week that we are working on the graphics for right now. 
and just one or two weeks after that we have an even uh, yeah, just as amazing story with a big image, uh, one of the biggest images we've done, which has been a, a really big challenge, uh, one of the bigger challenges this year also. Not just the anniversary products were of course mm -hmm. challenging, also because of the, the volume of making two books and, and the movie and several mm -hmm. other things, exhibitions and events and things. But, but then we had to um, find a way how to do really large images coming from the Vista telescope. Mm -hmm. Because each of those images are 16,000 pixels, yeah. uh, maybe 18,000 pixels. And when they're put together in mosaics, uh, at some point uh, our computer equipment couldn't follow and our software, our operating system. So we had to find a way to work with uh, 10 uh, gigapixel images, so images that are bigger than 100,000 mm -hmm. by 100,000 mm -hmm. um, pixels. And uh, we had to change operating systems to 64-bit, we had to upgrade... Uh, you mean uh, macros? Uh, no, we're actually using uh, Windows 64-bit oh, yeah. for that, but they could be equally well uh, Mac. And we use uh, SSD disks instead of RAM mm -hmm. uh, for, for swapping, because we have mm -hmm. more than 500 gigabytes of swapping. That has to take place while we compose the grayscale images into a color image. And then even saving uh, the images is a big challenge because the, the file formats don't work. TIFF it doesn't work at this scale. Really? really yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, even Photoshop has problems. It can actually only save as a, as a Photoshop internal file and yeah. things like this that you discover as you, as you move along and, and work with these kinds of images. But that's, that's what makes the job uh, really fun, that we can do high-tech things, we can work with these amazing images, with mm -hmm. amazing science that comes out, and try to combine it and excite people. That's absolutely great. And uh, one more question, again, about 3D animation. Uh, because as far as, I, as far as I know, animating of the uh, 3D animating of uh, various objects in the universe, which are far, far from us in the universe, and actually nobody has the full vision on how it works and this this also uh, there are a lot of argues about how it should be done in this or that way can you please tell us how it, it is done here in the in your in your organization yes so um, we always start with the science that's where things start mm -hmm. and we have some really great science communicators on the team we mm -hmm. have two who work full time with us and they take the science uh, and develop the visual concepts, mm -hmm. uh, the sketches, and then go to the graphics designers and work with them in order to visualize what the concepts are. And they can be very easy, like uh, if you have a new exoplanet system, you have some bodies and you have some physical yeah. characteristics and you have to place them right. But then it can be harder things like uh, expansion of the universe or an accelerating expansion of the universe. And you have to think very hard in order to uh, to, show to show it in, in the right way, and and but this is this is what they are good at. This is what they do for a living, in a, in a sense. So quasars, uh, I guess, it's also quite a hard task to show. It is yeah. also because no one has really seen close up how does a quasar look. We know the characteristics yeah. of a supermassive black hole, and we know that there are outflows. We know that there are some uh, violent events taking place. With lots of energy going on, mm -hmm. both in the vi visual but also other wavelengths. So there are some clues, but obviously no one has seen it, uh, and we need to stay close to the facts uh, while we still try to um, to portray things uh, in the incredible uh, mm -hmm. amazingness uh, that that uh, that it has, because I think often nature really uh, surpasses what you see in Hollywood movies. If you could look at these phenomena yeah. with your yeah. eyes, it, it would look much more impressive. I agree, I agree. Yeah. And uh, the last question is about which are your plans for the next year, let's say year 12, uh, 2013, and uh, uh, whether you plan some big events like we had uh, yesterday, for example, or something like Awesome Universe maybe, yeah. or some, uh, some international events, uh, worldwide events. Uh, could you please just tell, just open uh, this secret, tell yes. a few words mm -hmm. about this? I'd be, I'd be happy to. So there are three. Um, 
big things on my agenda. So the, the first and most interesting thing is now that we have to slowly uh, return to normalcy after the anniversary. Yeah. We have lots of uh, vacation time left that we need to take <laughs> now and uh, yeah, yeah. everyone has to somehow just recover mm -hmm. from, from everything that has taken place this year. But then we have the inauguration of the Alma Array in March 2013, oh. which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, Alma is nearly finishing, mm -hmm. and there will be a big event inviting all the um, ministers and heads of mm -hmm. state also mm -hmm. from the, the various countries and mm -hmm. Chile um, to, to Chile and to see Alma as it looks uh, mm -hmm. in a nearly finished state. And later in 2013, in November, we have the Chile um, anniversary, 50th anniversary. So the uh, convention with Chile was signed oh. 50 years okay. uh, earlier. And that's a big thing in Chile because this was when Chile got involved with, with ESO. Mm -hmm. And that needs to have a proper celebration. And uh, when would be uh, 50 years of La Silva? Uh, that's in about nine years from now. Oh. Uh, eight or nine years, so there's still a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> so you have really great plans for the next year. And I uh, wish you and your team and the uh, European Southern Observatory to, as a whole organization uh, success, scientific success, and also specifically for your team and you, uh, success in outreach uh, area. This is a really important uh, job you are doing, and uh, I think that uh, this could be valued as one of the best in the world, and uh, this is absolutely amazing, and um, here's my admiration to what you are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lars. Thank you, Dr. Margot. Thank you for coming by and, and thank you for talking to me. Thanks.